Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about bashing, insulting, or putting down groups of people that are seen as privileged or advantaged in our society, like dominant groups of people. So for example, white people, or like heterosexual people, cis people, groups like that. Unfortunately, in a lot of more liberal social circles that I tend to associate with, I see a lot of people voicing this idea that it is okay to put down groups of people and attack groups with insults when those groups are privileged. I don't agree with this, and my reasons for it are pretty complex. I have a lot of different reasons, but today I want to talk about intersectionality. I want to talk about the way people's different memberships in these different groups of people can interact in ways where if you are acting in such a way that you may think, oh, I'm attacking or putting down this privileged group, you might actually be harming oppressed groups of people by doing that. And I want to explain how and why this is the case. And it basically comes down to the fact that each of us is a member of a lot of different groups at once, and some of those memberships can be invisible. Like, being trans can be invisible, and it can be invisible both because some trans people can pass as the gender that they identify with, it also can be invisible because some trans people are closeted and may look like the gender associated with their assigned birth sex, even if it's not how they identify. Um, other things that can be invisible include mental disorders. Uh, a lot of those can be invisible because people can go through great lengths to hide that they are struggling with these things. Uh, sometimes socioeconomic status can be even invisible even, um, again because people can have a, an interest in hiding it. There are a lot of different identities that might be invisible. So when you're attacking someone, or when you're attacking a group of people, there are going to be a lot of people in that group who are members of various oppressed groups. So like, when you, you say you're doing something like you're attacking men as a group, and you're thinking, okay, like men are more privileged than women because of misogyny and because of patriarchy, and let's say that's your belief, and you start making these gross negative generalizations about men, and you're like, men are awful, they're dangerous, they're potential rapists, like, and you start talking about all these negative aspects of men, and sort of cultivating this fear-mongering. Who is that going to hurt? Well, if you think about in our society who our society is afraid of as a whole, one thing that you see is you see racial bias. So for example, there is this irrational fear of black men, and this fear leads to black men getting shot and killed by police at much higher rates than other races, especially than white people. Uh, and so, by making these negative generalizations about men, you could be harming this sort of racial stereotype. This bothers me, and I've seen sort of like white feminist discussions where there are a bunch of white feminists talking about this, and someone comes in and they're like, hey, like, black men are kind of seen in this bad way, and people just attack the person and shut them down. This really bothers me. It also interacts with trans identities. So, one thing that trans people struggle with a lot is restrooms. North Carolina got in the news for passing this really restrictive restroom law, saying that you could only use the restroom associated with the sex listed on your birth certificate, which I think is ridiculous. This is the sort of thing that is going on, this like policing of people's choices of where to use the restroom. And the motivation behind that is usually this fear of like men being in the women's restroom. So like if there's a trans woman, it doesn't matter if the person looks like a woman, it doesn't matter if the person identifies with a woman, it doesn't matter what their anatomy is, it doesn't matter what their hormones are or whatever in their body. Like there's some people who are like, oh, these people are just men because they were born as men, they were like, and so on. And this is this viewpoint that they have. And I think that this idea of like negative generalizations about men being inherently dangerous kind of play into that fear. So like when you're bashing and putting down men as a class of people, you're going to harm black men, you're going to harm 
trans women. You also could harm trans men, too. That's a little bit of a complex thing. Um, it gets more. There's more stuff here. Uh, another group of people that tends to get harmed by this sort of dialogue are neurodiverse people. So, for example, people on the autism spectrum, or people who are neurodiverse for other reasons. Like, that's a pretty broad term. It can encompass, like, social anxiety disorders, and other types of, like, different ways of processing the world. And neurodiverse people often struggle with certain situations. They may struggle with reading social cues. They may struggle with, like, interacting with people in a way that seems respectful and natural. And so, this whole, like, negative stereotyping of men can harm those people as well, because those people are the ones who are most likely to get labeled as, like, creepy, and things like that. I want to give another example of where criticizing privileged groups of people can actually harm a group of people that is not in a very privileged position. And this is discussion of white racism. I see a lot of discussion about how there are trends in racism in the United States, and that people who are living in more rural and isolated areas, and who have lower educational status, are more likely to harbor racist views. And I see people in liberal social circles widely condemning, attacking, and shaming people for harboring racist views. And this really bothers me, because I think that there is a degree to which being able to get over racism is itself a function of privilege. Like, part of the reason that I have been able to root out more institutional racism than some other white people is that I grew up in a city, I got to interact with people of different races, my parents are both well-educated, so they were well aware of racial issues, they talked to me about racial issues. I went to a good liberal arts college, Oberlin College, which also had a substantial minority population, more racial diversity than some colleges have, and Oberlin had this very progressive set of coursework, and so I learned more about racism in school. And then I moved to Cleveland, another urban area that also has racial diversity, and I worked there with people of different races. It's an active process. Like, I didn't get over racism instantly. It was a slow process. It's like chipping away at these little things. And I had to use my privilege to do it. I had to use my financial resources. I had to use the fact that I was living in these urban areas where I came into contact with a lot of different people and a lot of different perspectives. There's a lot that went into it. And I think that it's easy for people who have access to those things to take for granted those things. Some people don't have access to those things. Some people live in areas where they are surrounded by people of their own race, and not only of their own race, but people who hold views very similar to their own. And I think it's much harder for those people to overcome their racism. So when you attack white people for being racist, and you're attacking white people as a group of people, and you're like shaming and condemning people who express racist views, who is that going to hurt? That's going to hurt uneducated white people. That's going to hurt white people of lower socioeconomic status. That's going to hurt white people in isolated rural areas. It's pretty common sense when you think about it, so don't do it. Basically, what my message in this video, when you shame, attack, condemn, make sweeping negative generalizations about groups of privileged people, you hurt the oppressed people within that, within that group. You hurt the least privileged people in that group. So basically, don't do it. It's a really bad thing. I'd love for us to build a consensus in our society, around not doing that sort of thing. Not shaming, attacking, condemning groups of people, independently of whether or not they are privileged. Yeah, that's what I have to say. Thank you.